We're losing! Teamwork, guys, more team. They're burying us alive! Wow, shit. Jeez, Louie. Honey, don't you want to beat those bastards? We're gonna be winners. That's enough. We got nothing left to inside. Cause you're training like a damn bum, you know that. Screw up. What are I'm you doing? Dead. What are people doing? Is this early access to? Hey, let me tell you something, bro. Get out there now and do the best you can. All right, welcome to episode six of the Bad Fodder Figures podcast. Today is Sunday, December 3rd, and I'm a little tired after my three days of extra life, but the show must go on, so here we are recording. Yep, gentlemen, three days of extra life is in the books. I must say it was a uh, great experience. Man, you was a soldier, Mike. You was a soldier. Well, you know, Jeremy gets a little bit more credit than me. Jeremy did a, a full 24 hours, right? I did, yeah. And yeah. Man, that's hardcore right there. <laughs> that, that, is. that is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> that is hardcore. I, I should split it up, but... <laughs> yeah, I just I just decided after that one time I did 24 hours that that is not for me. The, with my current physique, um, I just, can, <laughs> I just cannot uh, cut that. So... I did three eight-hour days from uh, Friday, December 1st through today, and I must say it was a good time, and kudos to my uh, employer for paying me on Friday to uh, stream, so that was nice, and uh, props to Jeremy for, I guess, pushing me to ask them if that was something they would do, and they gladly would, so. Nice. Uh, I had a, um, I guess, a um, realistic goal of 500 and all said and done, I raised eight hundred and fifty dollars. So that was good. Yes. I, I told my wife beforehand when I was either Thursday night or or Friday at some point. I was like, I'm going to raise five dollars and look like a complete friggin' fool here. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to say maybe within I don't know three hours or something. I think we were already past five hundred dollars. So. Props yeah. to all you guys, people like Lovebox and Matt and the Mafias, Latina Mafia and Mafia Thug and other wife that stopped in, <laughs> uh, Robo Pig and I'm gonna forget people. I don't. I apologize. I don't have it up in front of me here, but there was a bunch of people that uh, stopped in and, ma- and made donations. So I really do appreciate that. And you know, the best thing about Extra Life besides you know the money going to the kids and you know hanging out and playing with everybody is that i don't have to touch the money right so there's no right. uh, it's not like a gofundme or something like well what's, gonna, yeah. what's he gonna he needs he needs you know his dog surgery but he's spending it on a headset you know or, <laughs> right. um, so i you know well, that's the best part is i don't have to touch any of this you know it goes right to the sort well it goes to extra life and we're under the assumption that they give it to the hospitals which i'm sure they do um so that that's really an enjoyable part because you're donating the money and you know there's no uh, gray area at all it goes right to the cause yeah mm-hmm. it was it was really seamless too you know you, you put your little information in and boom that was, i like that whole situation yep i think uh juggler of geese donated you know i'll have to pull up the list here at some point so we'll thank everybody at the end um yeah it was a great time and that the eight hour days really made it um enjoyable and I never thought I'd play 16 hours straight of Fortnite, but that was the case. That's so, a whole lot of Fortnite. That is a whole mm. lot of Fortnite. That was um, you, three you had victories. You a pretty good <laughs> – yeah, man. I watched one of them, too, and it was freaking outstanding. Right. We uh, – I don't know. Mark had this one kid. I think he literally is a kid. His uh, screen name is Impossible Meme. And this kid was building like, you know, he was Bob the Builder on steroids. <laughs> you know, he was just unbelievable. Like, I didn't even know you could, like, curve some of these structures. You know, Matt was telling me, yeah, you can do that in the in the base game, the PvE. But I had no idea that you could do that in the Battle Royale stuff. So I was completely, completely blown away. But uh, just, yeah. you know, overall a great experience. I would gladly do it next year, uh, the same type of format. I also am a big believer of doing it on a day when no one else is doing it. 
that seems to um, be a good strategy because when everybody's doing it on the same day, you know, people's time and money can only be spread across so many things. And I thought it was important to do it on a different day, just like Jeremy did it the week before, right? Correct. Yep, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it, it doing it on the same day as everyone is is good if you like need someone to help stay. You know, especially in the, those wee hours, if you need someone to kind of help, you know, play uh, and keep you awake. But like in your case, since you split it up and it was kind of reasonable hours, uh, that was definitely a good choice. Yeah, yeah. You know, the only you know Saturday was a bit of a crazy day. I still had to work, so I worked eight to five, and then I took an hour break and then streamed from six to two. But it flew by, you know, a bunch of people popped in, we rotated people in and out, uh, so no complaints whatsoever. So I nice. think, uh, Dave, uh, good from gaming, RoboPig said I'm somewhere like 12th on the leaderboard, so that's not too bad. And I think with all the donations that I uh, accumulated, I think we passed $25,000 for good for gaming, nice. which, which I think either mm. puts us in 26th or 27th place. That's wow. uh, out of all the teams, so not too shabby. Props to uh, to Dave. He does a lot of work. He was telling us today that he's like the guild and part of the guild in Boston, so he goes to monthly meetings and tries to um, coordinate certain efforts and get people to partake in it and things like that. So Dave does all the heavy lifting, and he stopped by and donated twice, so that was good. He said, I'll give you a dollar. For every kill that you get in this particular round of Call of Duty, and I was like, Gee, no. Mike owed him money. I was like, yeah. I was like I'm going to end up owing you money. But somehow I pulled it together and got 12 kills. So he donated uh, $12. Now, Matt, you were in there a bunch. And um, you were also in there for other reasons, Matt, that maybe you're not aware of. <laughs> yeah, apparently that. so here that, that was hilarious so matt was uh he had his christmas party and we'll get to that in just a few minutes here we'll talk about that but he was tweeting not as much as we would we hoped for but he gave us a couple nuggets <laughs> and i um kept people that were in this you know because we didn't want these people to lose focus of the stream right you want to keep everybody on the stream sure and yeah. so I, I was keeping abreast of the Twitter. I was looking at it, you know, hitting the F5, and every time there'd be an update, I'd interrupt the broadcast and say, we have an emergency uh, broadcast update, <laughs> and we would throw your picture up there on the big screen. With all the stickers on his mm-hmm. name yeah. tags on it. Oh, yeah. my gosh. And then you with the women at the end. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So mm. let's hear it, Matt. Let's hear uh, all about the Christmas party. And, you know, there was one picture. I don't know if you guys saw this the last picture that came in, it wasn't on the stream, but Matt I'm going to uh, I'm gonna yes. upload it here to the uh, chat here. I mean, yeah, I swear, I, Eric, if you look at the, when he, this picture comes across, right? Uh-huh. Let me know when you see it, but yeah, I swear he's about a half inch off the ground. I'm at least more than that. He's got, oh. you know, Matt was, he's Matt got some, had his hands up in the air. He was. He's got some lift on him. Look at him. He's at least a yeah. half inch off the ground. Yeah, yeah. I'll bring it here. I'm going to put it in the chat here. But the Christmas party was uh, a whole lot of fun, as always. It is. It is uh, great. We, um, I mean, it's the company really does a good job with bringing this all together uh, for this night here and that. So it's it's great. It's. I, now let me let me I set just, the stage here. It's not just like. <laughs> It's not like just like go to like a VFW and there's no. like a there's like a punch bowl and you know, like a <laughs> like a buffet, right? This is right. This is a this is a classy place, right? Yes, it is. It's it's at the Queen City Club here in Cincinnati, Ohio. I don't know if you guys have ever seen the movie Trading Places. Yes. yes. That, that that place that they go to all the time, you know, where, where it's, a, it's like the club, all the rich people are there. That, that's what this is. This place mm-hmm. is. It's that type of place. All right. Well, and, now, that you, uh, now that you brought that up, real quick. Trading Place is a Christmas movie, yay or nay, across the board? Sure, because it's Christmas stuff. And Dan Aykroyd ate the fish on the bus. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Jeremy, now this is only one of the handful of movies I've ever seen in my life, so you have to uh, weigh in on this. Christmas movie or no? Man. You got Cisco and Ebert over here. Fucking. I know, I know. No. I, I, will, I will say that it's more of a Christmas movie than Die Hard. All right. So I'll leave it at that. 
Wow. Mm. A lot of people right really? now just turned off the podcast. Yeah, no. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> they just drove yeah. off the road. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah. But right, um, um, it's it's a really cool place. Um, they get a band. The band this year came from Nashville, came up for the uh, do the music and that. Um, always, I mean, it's, it's free uh, booze, free liquor, free Open drinks. Bar. Open bar. Yep. Mm-hmm. Anything you want. <laughs> Which is dangerous sometimes. Um, and uh, this year, I got to uh, sit at the uh, head table with the You got to sit the at the CEO. head of the table? They yeah, sit at the kids, the kids table? table? <laughs> yeah. No longer at the kids table. I was at the uh, CEO's table this year. Uh, Uh-oh. Yeah, just by, it's, it's by chance every year. They do, they do a um, – when you come in, you get your name tags, and then uh, you – pull a, a number out of a basket and that's the table you're supposed to be at so it's all a random type of thing it's no assigned seating and it just happened i picked uh, his table so you know he's like are you sure you want to sit there you want to like yeah sit down give us you know no wick he's we're, we're good you know everything like that i don't care okay we just want to make sure you're okay with sitting there i was like D- do you not want me sitting there or something do you want someone else there or what yeah i, I don't care like no no that's fine it's you sit there. so dinner was a whole lot of fun we had a great fun Talking to him and that, he gave his little speech, and then he kind of passed the mic on to the next uh, CEO, which was Matt. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It surprised everybody. <laughs> they were like, "Oh shit!" Um, no pants Thursday. Yeah. <laughs> 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 um, uh, so he passed on your phone to the next CEO, and uh, as the next CEO started talking, I spilt my wine glass on the table. Um, luckily it was empty. Luckily it was empty, but it made a sound and that, and he's just like, what the fuck, man? So, um, <laughs> but, uh, it went well. And then the, the chorus at the, uh, after dinner, for some reason, I won't start giving me their name tags. So you didn't and even solicit for, these, for some reason. Come over. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. a mystery they the, why they, they would do, do that. that. Yeah. They do that every year though, don't they? Yeah. Well, it's been, exactly. this is the third year in a row now. This is the third year in a row it's happened. The first year is just, you know, like my wife put her name tag on me and then a couple other people I work with will put them, you know, on my tires like that. And it kind of grew from there. Yeah, so last year. Now. Yeah. It, it pretty much is. Like this year, I didn't even do anything. It just, all, all of a sudden people just start putting their name tags on me after, after uh, dinner. Mm. So, so, of course. Uh, Matt, would you say tag. that? Would you say that there is uh, at the water cooler at work instead of uh, pin the tail on the donkey? It's like you know pin the um, name yeah, tags name on the tag donkey. On <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're, they're putting them on my butt. They're putting them on my back. Whoa. They're all type of crazy stuff and that rubbing, rubbing them on my chest and that. It's like God damn. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. Uh, we're not going to go down that road. Yeah. Um, no, no. I got a question though. I got a question for you, Matt. Yes, sir. I'm gonna need you to explain that one picture where that girl had her tongue in your ear. I'm, yeah. I'm gonna need you to explain. I was going. To, I, that was where I was going next. Uh, every year I like get a uh, picture with my uh, <laughs> uh, as many women. <laughs> this year I waited until li- too late in the evening, uh, so I was stuck with my wife and uh, someone, no, else was... <laughs> someone else. Someone <laughs> else and one of the yeah, secretaries at the uh, at the uh, at work there. Then the, the when I had the tongue in my ear, it's one of the secretaries at work that I work with a lot. So. Ah, was that <laughs> your secretary? Yes, yes. No, I'm not asking well, not, this. Not mine personally. She, she's <laughs> like uh, our department's secretary. Barb's his secretary. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I, I told Barb to do something. She just laughs at me. No, I'm not asking if if Barb would care, but if the roles were reversed there, and I'm not going down the whole road of what's going on in the world right now, would that be frowned upon at your place if? She was the one sitting down, and you were put sticking your tongue out. <laughs> uh, that's a good question. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Try it, try it at work tomorrow. See what happens. <laughs> yeah, see what happens. <laughs> yeah, maybe don't do it at work, but maybe the next company. Well, I, I think if I would have tried it at work, yeah, I think there'd be an issue. But if something, if maybe that night or something, if I would have done it, I think it would have been a, maybe a different story. I don't know. That's, no. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not, I'm not going to really test that uh, out and see what happens there. <laughs> I'd like to be at my job for another 22 years or so. so. Jeez Louise. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> 22 years. Yeah, I've been there 20 years and uh, hopefully uh, a lot more. So now you, it's, cons- I mean, it's, it's a great place to work for. Okay, it's can something to be said for work. consistency. You, and how long have you been married? 21 years? Yeah. Wow. So you weird, really don't have any memories beyond this job and your wife. It's just like I can't hands remember hands. last week. Yeah. You can't what? No, I can't remember last week. Mm. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah, 
Well, yeah. let me remind you, last week we were making fun of your toe. This week we're uh, talking about your Christmas <laughs> It's, it's always a good time. It's, it's a lot of fun. It's a great company to work for, and uh, they treat you right, so it's um, pretty decent. Excellent. Just like my wife's dress was pretty decent. <laughs> oh my god! Did you, were you guys watching the stream during this? Yeah, she was. She was down there, like showing him the dress. Yeah, <laughs> and she's like, "Yeah, you look decent." <laughs> let me, Jeremy, let me. Jeremy and I are, let me ask you this: If your wife, whether she's dolled up or not, if she's just putting on the dress. Just to show you it, have you ever said back to her, "Yeah, you look decent"? Never. No, I, I will. the the way The way out of that one, pro tip, is to say, "You look better in in the other one." So, like, if there's two, or you know, hey, that blue one that you wear, I like that one better. So, so don't actually say anything negative about that one. Just say something positive about a different one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she just Always bought that positive. one. You don't want to say anything bad about the new one, right? Because right. you know, then the Quicken wallet could starts to like you know. <laughs> what, I bought something that doesn't look good and I got to return it now? <laughs> oh, oh uh, yeah. So anything else about the uh, Christmas party we're unaware of? Well, well, well I wanted to talk about the picture. So you're on this picture and you got your feet off the ground. You got your, your hand, hands above your head almost, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. So how did this happen? Did they call you up there? Your employees start yes. like, you know, when they had a wedding, they start like smashing the glass with like the utensil. <laughs> was there a Matt, 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 Matt chant? What, what happened? No, the, the, there was, uh, they was getting ready to play the song Brick House. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah. It's just a household name. I don't even know that song. <laughs> oh, boy. Not the Commodores. And the, guy, the guy's like, you know, where's the name tag, man? We want name tag guy up here. So oh, I get no, up there. I don't even know your name. Yeah, mm. yeah. Well, I didn't know my name at that time. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> so they said, okay, you know, we're going to give you the count to three, and you're going to break it down for us. I was like, oh, cool, oh, break it down, down. <laughs> broke it down. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're going to break it down. Matt's looking so, for Legos. He's looking for stuff to break. Do? <laughs> what the hell am I going to do? <laughs> and so you know, it's three, two, one. It's like, oh shit! You know, so I just started like jumping around. Break it down. Like, yeah, I parked a little and. Uh, I was just, you know, <laughs> doing the whole, all can, you twer- can you twerk a little? Don't, yeah, I mean, you're doing it or you're not, right? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> my hips around. I was twerking. I don't think I was. Like... <laughs> Jeremy, do you go Ask to your Christmas happen. party? Or do they have No. One? no. Uh, well, this is this will be my first Christmas at my current place, but uh, my last place I worked at, uh, they outlawed them basically two years before I started working there because uh, they used to have them at nice hotels, and uh, I believe the, the, the urban legend was that somebody ended up puking off the rail of a second floor balcony that led into the – so, like, yeah, people just couldn't control themselves, so they, they stopped company, it. Though, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So th- is this company much smaller? No, not really. Oh, okay. Okay. Hmm. I think my work's having a Christmas party, but I'm not getting on a plane to California. So. <laughs> Doesn't seem fair. That they're now, if they were out. having one, Jeremy, would you go? Uh, probably not. Probably. I not. doubt it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just want to picture if if they called you up to break it down. Uh, <laughs> oh Jesus! Yeah, man, I'd, I'd be. Uh, I'd you be imagine some that, rug Jeremy, up there. Up yeah. Front. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, they refer to Matt the top, as uh, uh, name tag man. What would they refer to you as? <laughs> Asshole in the corner. I don't know. Oh, oh. <laughs> uh, they called you out to break it down. Oh no, no, my God, that's funny. I bet Eric could break it down. I can break it down, but I ain't going to no Christmas party to do it. So, <laughs> you don't, do they have a Christmas party? Yeah, they do. I'm not going. I don't like nobody that goes to them. So, forget it. There's like <laughs> people in your like your group. What is it? Platoon or? <laughs> no, nah, they're not in my platoon. They're all the upper management people. All the oh. people that you don't ever see except for the Christmas party. And now, are you Whatever. invited to go though? Yeah, I'm invited. But I ain't going. Now, would you have to wear like your like your uh... blues? <laughs> Your blues. No, 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 no. You wear civvy clothes. Civ- right civvies. Clothes. Yeah, you wear yeah. civvies. All right. Huh. Well, now that we've covered extra life and Christmas parties, I feel like we should we should get on with the show. Yes, sir. Uh, there is a Christmas uh, Christmas. There is an award show this Thursday, December seventh, the Game Awards. Um, you know, I really don't pay too much attention to what the pundits say as far as the best games, but. 
I think how they get people to watch this show is through the announcements and the premieres and stuff like that. So do you guys have any interest? Are you going to be tuning in Thursday to see uh, some new IPs launched or some um, new trailers for existing franchises and things like that? Absolutely. I'll be there. Yeah. Without, yeah. without you and Jeremy and Matt, you any interest? Uh yeah, I, I think I mean it'll be on more as a uh, background noise than anything else. But yeah, I'll, I'll have it on probably. Yeah. Um, I know it's a big production. You know, Jeff Keighley. I don't know where he gets the money from. He must have made some money along the way, but he pretty much pays for this thing out of pocket. I'm sure he's got sponsors now. Now that he's been yeah. doing this mm-hmm. for, for a couple of years in a row. But I know the first one at least he paid all that out of pocket. Um. As we look through some of these awards here, is there anyone, uh, Eric, that catches your eye that you are curious about a winner on? I'm thinking Mario Odyssey is going to take it all. Yeah. I'm trying to, <laughs> I'm trying to think for Game of really? the Year. Um, you know, Game of the Year has got Zelda, Super Mario Odyssey, PUBG, uh, Persona 5, and Horizon Zero Dawn. It's going to be close between PUBG and, like, some sort of Nintendo game. That's what I'm thinking. Those are the only? Like, those are the nominees? Yep, five games, yep. Ah. Hmm. That's a tight category right there. Yeah. So, you know, PUBG's on the list, though. Yeah, we, I know we had a discussion last week about that. Mm, I wonder, just to drum up controversy, you know, and I'm not saying real controversy but just so people keep continue the conversation type of controversy if they vote for that one mm. you know what i mean if you mm-hmm. let's just say if you gave it to zelda how much more conversation is is there afterwards about you know the award show but if you said hey a game in early access it's got one map that's not even out on the consoles yet it's on one platform you know it's one game of the year yeah i bet zelda gets it zelda or mario mm. Now they have um, some other podcasts like to poke fun at this, but there is a uh, topic for uh, best trending gamer of the year. Well, that's got to be Jeremy. Disrespect, <laughs> <laughs> Doctor Disrespect, or whatever his name is. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this is uh, an interesting category. Um, I don't know, you know. If it has any weight in the world, but you know, I think this is almost voted for by the fans. I don't think this is voted by the um, the industry peers and things like that. But um, Stephen Spawn, who does uh, great work with Able Gamers himself, is disabled, is on the list, and some other people like Shroud from Cloud Nine, Doctor Disrespect, this other guy. I don't know who he is. Uh, Half coordinated, never heard of him. And then Andrea mm-hmm. um, Andrea Rene, who's been at various outlets and sometimes if you go into GameStop and they have like GameStop TV. Yeah, it should be on the screen. Yeah, exactly. She's pretty hot too. Yeah. So we'll see. Um, I think that's Thursday night. Uh, like I said, uh, I'll probably be working that night and like Matt said, it'll be on in the background filling up some noise, but curious to see what new things will be uh, brought out. They're going to supposedly show the new PUBG map at the Game Awards, the desert map. Mm-hmm. And I think they're going to be showing more of uh, Last of Us 2. So, um, be exciting to see, see what happens. And yeah. Speaking of PUBG, there's a couple Battle Royale games coming to phones. There's one already out on the Android. I believe Jeremy and Matt, you guys have Androids, right? That is correct. Mm-hmm. So there is a game called, uh, let's see here, Exile Battle Royale by 505 Games. And it's uh, 60 player PvP. Mm. So I think it is uh, free. They have in app uh, purchases for 99 cents up to $100 per item. Jeez, we won't we won't go <laughs> we won't go into that and uh, discuss loot boxes and things like that, but um, just by looking at some of the screenshots you know, you see the plane, you see the parachutes, and, yeah, just going around and last man standing wins. So it's free to play. I think you guys should both download it and try it out and then report back and let us know if it's uh, worthwhile or anything. I'll give it a try. 
Yeah, I can only really imagine how because you know the times we replayed PUBG, I thought you know this is way too easy to control. <laughs> what I would like is a touch screen and try to do this. That would be really great. Let's. Yeah. I wish there was something to finally our prayers have been answered. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, yeah, I'll download this. Now, if you really enjoy it, Jeremy, you know you can. I, I know you love to get out of the house, and you're you're a traveler of the world. So right. one of your, one of your many trips, you should stop in China. <laughs> I, I know you just left there, but if, if you're going to go right. back, um, they're releasing Call of Duty Battle Royale in China. So for some reason, Call of Duty's mobile games only get released in China. Uh, huh. So the company there, the big mobile company, Tencent, is releasing this. It's uh, 16 players. So you get better odds, cool. Jeremy. Yeah, um, right, right. You know. Oh, excuse me, 18 players. My my bad. Um, I'll allow it. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, you guys report back. Let me know how that worked out for you. And uh, I want some chicken dinners. Take screenshots. <laughs> oh, right. man. We got a few uh, voicemails this week. So we're going to uh, jump into that. Matt, why don't you give the number before we uh, start the jingle here? Absolutely. 508-659-BFFS. 508-659-BFFS. Give it a call. All right. Operator, may I help you? Are you the operator? I'm long distance, sir. Overseas, may I help you? Director and sisters, can I help you, please? Hello. So we got a few voicemails this week. Um, let's see who we got on the line first. I believe this guy is all the way from uh, the West Coast. Let's see who it is. Hey, what's up, bad fodder figure? It's a uh, Chalfie. Chalfie. I just wanted to chime in with the um, a suggestion for some awards or an award. Um, mm. I'd like to hear about your like most outstanding moments from your previous podcast. You know, your other shows, 40 Cast and whatnot, mm. Gamers, Dads, <clears throat> uh, you know, just to hear, like, doesn't have to be the best moment. Could be, like, a super low moment, a crazy, like, what the fuck is going on moment, but just kind of, like, an outstanding moment in your mind from the previous shows. Also, man, glove box. how come no one told me that this Switch was probably going to be the raddest thing I was going to own? Um, I love my PlayStation so much. Um, you know, I love the, like, amazing graphics, still love the controller. But damn, that Vita, that that Switch is what the Vita was supposed to be. Like that pick up and play is amazing. Um, I keep it in my work bag all the time. Um, so whenever I get a few moments, I'll be playing just like random things. That's a, that's that little system. You said it, dude. It's a beast. It's rad. Um, I'm so glad I have it now. So uh, hey, thanks for the, the good shows, and uh, I'll keep listening. Peace. All right, thanks a lot, Chaffee. And I just wrote that suggestion down in my phone because I know <clears throat> Matt's sort of slacking with his uh, secretarial duties. So mm. I got to make well, sure. Stick your tongue yeah. in. Stick yeah, your tongue in. Yeah. See if that happens. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, see if that helps. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I I don't get enough time with the Switch because I'm always fucking playing Fortnite. Friggin' addiction. Um, <laughs> Hey, the first step is admitting that you have a problem. So yeah, well, I have a problem. Trust me. Um, yeah, I would echo his sentiments, wouldn't you, Eric? Thing is, yeah, man, I I take mine to work all the time, man. Now, would you I have know a that case? Might be, that might be counterproductive, but yeah, yeah, I have a case and everything for it. I take it all the time. It's great. Now, let me ask you about this. So, you're playing this at work? There's like. Break a break of one. We got a uh, perp on the street. <laughs> and why would they get to get some moons in Mario Odyssey? Nah. The time See, I, that. Said it, I said it in my office at my desk, and I don't even be out there doing all that foolishness. <laughs> and if, I got I got officers for that, bro. I don't do none of that. Oh, the life. I sit back with, I sit back with my feet up playing no. No. Mario, and they come in, hey, sorry, we're doing a DUI. I'm like, handle that. Take care of it. No, we go. should 
we should say that you you know you've put your time in. You're a veteran. How long were you in the military? I've been in the military and a cop and all it all collectively twenty nine years, bro. Twenty nine years. So how many years would you say that you've had the freedom to play video games in your office and lock the door and not care about DUIs, bomb threats, murders, stalkings, <laughs> anything else? <laughs> How many years? Wow. Around between about seven years. Wow, seven. seven years. So, twenty—you got to put twenty-two years in to get to that status. It's not bad. Yeah. Anybody out there that's looking to make a career? <laughs> you, <laughs> and you, you, know? you were, you were in what branch again? I was in the Air Force. Air Force. Okay. Good yeah. stuff. Good stuff. Yeah. All right. So that guy was from the West Coast. Let's go to the uh, middle of the country. This guy also reminds me. A voice f- familiar of someone else who called in to help Matt, but we'll see. Hey, Bad Potter Figures, Indio Techno here. I uh, had a couple questions. Yeah. Uh, one for Fred French. Uh, his Twitter handle is Fred French 2017. Uh, I mean, is he done at uh, December 31st? Is he going to retire? Is he going to change? I don't know. Everybody wants to know. It's, you know, buzz of the internet. Uh, next, are we going to get any pictures of Matt's toes? Uh, did he call Fook May and hook that up? Because <laughs> uh, really, I mean, he's going to scratch his wife with that when they're having sex. Oh, oh huh. you're uh, uh, Then last thing, um, you guys are talking about all these loot boxes in games. Um, what about Loot Crate, uh, the physical box you could buy, that subscription service? Uh, I tried it out a couple times. Uh, when I got the box, just full of disappointment. So it seems like the video games are mimicking real life. So should we just be disappointed in the um, you know di- digital disappointments too? I don't know. Have you guys done it? Let me know. Thanks. Bye. All right. Hmm. So n- no uh, <laughs> updates on the toe, Matt, right? Status quo? Yeah, the toe the toe's still there. Everything's uh everything's just fine with the toe right now. Okay. You know. Uh, I have not called Fook Me yet. Uh May. <laughs> what yeah, Fook yeah. Me, Fook Fook Me, Fuck so you know, Um <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea uh, when I'll get around to calling him. Uh, we'll, we'll see no. when the toe starts turning black or something like that. Well, you know, like um, <laughs> when ladies do like sewing, they have like a thimble. And, yeah. uh, and uh, Tony Iommi from Black Sabbath uh, had an incident when he was young and cut off the f- some of his fingertips. And he wears like a, like a little rubber tip on his finger. When he plays guitar, I'm not sure if you're aware of that. I did um, not know that. So when you get into bed at night and try to get to the sweet lovemaking, do you feel subconscious about this toe and put some sort of like apparatus, like a thimble, rubber cap? Barrier. It's, yes. Like well, a condom for I your toe. Since I don't <laughs> normally use my toe for sexual satisfaction, uh, no, I don't really do anything with my you know, toe. Uh, you, you know, know when it comes uh, to those over. intimate moments with this... You're looking in each other's eyes. Sometimes the legs wrap around each other. The, the feet <laughs> is some sort of you know tickling of the the legs on the feet on each other's legs. It's, you don't feel self conscious at all, right? Uh, not not no, uh, not not at all. Not at all. He probably still has socks on. He probably wears socks during it. Oh, I do wear socks to bed. Let me ask you. I don't, you, like, uh, I don't like cold feet. Let me ask you. Let me ask you a question. Can you guys watch porn with people with socks on? <laughs> no. No. <all> right. I, <laughs> I, do do they make porn with socks on? I mean, I, yeah, I'm kind of curious. Where the <laughs> well, you, sometimes they have socks on. I'm like, that's very weird. Yeah, anyway. I agree. <laughs> All right. Uh, what did he say? Fred French, um, 2017. Fred, next week you got to weigh in on that. What is your plan? Are you going to have a new handle? Are you going to be like PewDiePie and just say, I'm getting rid of all my followers and I'm going to start a new account, Fred French, 2018, and, and just go from there. Start fresh. Yeah. <laughs> And what was his last thing there? Loot boxes? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. I have never done a physical, like a loot crate or one of those things. Has anybody done that? Nah. I have not. You yeah. know, for a while there, you've seen all the rage on Twitter. People reporting where they get in their loot box. You know, they got like a cool hat or T-shirt or what have you. But I haven't seen a lot of that stuff kind of. You lately, know, I think, so. I think what happens is they they bring you in because, let's say, this month it's going to be Fallout, or this month it's going to be Witcher or Star Wars, and you're like, yeah, this is, you know, I, I identify with this franchise and I buy it, and then the next week it's like, yeah, Dragon Ball Z is next month, and you're like, I don't give a shit about Dragon Ball Z. What am I going to do with all this fucking crap? Yeah, yeah. It's about yeah. a waste of money. Yeah, and they're not cheap. I've looked into them no. a couple times. Yeah. They are not cheap. 
Well, huh. you, you guys had a had a good discussion on that last week, and I you, I think it was Eric who said something about uh, you know you're not getting anything of real value, so no, it's not really gambling or whatever. But um, just right. to kind of you know go off what Indio said about imita- you know games imitating life, I, loot boxes are gumball machines, you know, or those those little machines that were outside of the exactly. the grocery yeah. store. You know, you you, exactly. you see that, and you might want the the red gumball. Uh, you know, but you put your quarter in knowing that you might not get that red one. Hell, you might get the, the black licorice one that tastes like the devil's armpit or something oh, like that. So, mm-hmm. I mean, you're going to get you're going to get a gumball, but it might not be the one you want. And same thing with those loot crates. You know, yeah, you're going to get something Fallout themed, but it, it might not be the thing that you want, but you're going to get something. So yeah. Fallout mm-hmm. earrings. Just what I wanted. Yeah. <laughs> 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 All right. Uh, speaking of Fred French. Bad butter <laughs> figures. What's up, gentlemen? Once again, Fred French in the house. <laughs> Great show last week, guys. As I said it on Twitter, and I'm going to say it on here, Captain Mike knocked it out of the park with his story. That was the story of the year. I couldn't stop laughing. I was just, I could visualize the whole thing, and that is the funniest thing I've heard in a long time. <laughs> the only thing that would have made it better, the creme de la creme, the jewel on top, is if you would have videotaped that and put that on YouTube. <laughs> My goodness, would you have the hits and the people laughing. Absolutely <laughs> hilarious. Great story. Gentlemen, I'm going to keep it a little bit shorter this week since <laughs> I embarrassed myself last week by getting cut off. So, <laughs> this is my question, gentlemen, after listening to your show. There seems to be a lot of talk of people want more and more out of video games, but they don't want to pay much, and they're all it is a business, and people making them and running them do want to make money. So what would you be willing to give up to allow video games to be maybe a little cheaper, maybe help these people run them a little bit more efficient, not have to put as much into them, and still make money and let you still have your enjoyment of playing video games. Because the last thing I want to see is the video game industry shut down. I'm thinking, you know, I could probably go with scaled back graphics if that somehow helped. I know the Microsoft people don't like that with their Xbox One X and all their hyped up superior graphics. But hey, if if something has to give, I'm, I'm putting graphics first. I'd be just curious to what you guys would be willing to uh, sacrifice to help this industry keep going strong and keep going for years and years into the future. Thank you for your time, gentlemen. Thank you for the podcast. You all do an outstanding job. I salute you. And as always, Arima Durchi. All right. Goodbye, Fred French. He sounds well, like he's Fred cold French, this week. but he always signs off in Italian. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Mm, some shenanigans. Hmm. Uh, What's up with that, Fred? We got yeah. two questions next yeah. week, Fred. What's going to happen with the uh, handle, and why the Italian sign off? Yeah, we want answers. We got yeah. questions for you now. Exactly. <laughs> Inquiring minds want to know. <laughs> yeah. 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 Sorry. So, Jeremy, what are you willing to give up to keep things at an affordable price and run more efficient in gaming? I'm a bad person to ask because I will wait till the cows come home to get a good price on a game. I don't have any problems with a very few exceptions. I don't mind waiting, but uh, I, I would say graphics is is a good answer. Uh, and I would say I I you know maybe go along with Fred on that one just because I, I mentioned a few episodes ago that I've still have yet to had a a real 4K gaming experience, so I don't know that I need it. Uh, to actually enjoy games, so well, let me um, ask you: Does this four K developing something in four K does that require more pixels? So that means more work, which means they got to pay more people to create it. Sure. Yeah, you got to have a higher quality of design. So you, you know, your artist has to spend more time putting individual specks of dirt or whatever mm-hmm. on the on your walls and floors gotcha. and everything like that to make it lifelike. Gotcha. All right. Anybody else uh, have something they'd like to give up? Matt, this is the uh, the giving season, but maybe you want to give up something. I don't know. I mean, maybe like yeah, like what Jeremy said. Maybe you know something with the graphics because um, seems like it's all the rage to have it raining in the game now, just because I can show you the raindrops and stuff and how cool it looks. Um, yeah, I I don't know because I I like my games and I'll pay 
to play my games for good content. That so I don't, I, I don't know. I, I can't answer that. Mm. I would I would say I would give up. You know how some of these games look, look like. Let's take for instance, uh, Battle Battlefront Two. I don't think we we probably could give up the orchestrated scores. You know, have the orchestras doing the the music and everything. We could probably. You know, cut a little cost in that. Or something. You know, you know, <laughs> I think yeah. I think most games could get away with that, but not Star Wars. There's no you way, especially, especially not with not with Disney owning them and, and the way I, they are I with mean, their licensing and rights. And we don't have to have the sound. I mean, granted, I love my sound. You know, the whole surround sound thing. But man, I know those people. Those those are straight up musicians man you know what i mean we can oh, have yeah, somebody yeah. you know playing the keyboard or something you know, I don't know. <laughs> well you, you know what you bring because madden could save a lot of money with, without oh like, yeah seeing the, all the yeah. songs they have there you know so yeah. there is that yeah yeah well you know for me i'm all i'm all about the flow of the show right i care about how we move from one topic to the next so i know someone has just completed the campaign for Star Wars Battlefront 2. But let me say this. Something I'd be willing to give up is certain modes that are shoehorned into games. For example, Last of Us, did we need a multiplayer? Uncharted yeah. 4, did we need a multiplayer? Mm. Now, Jeremy, you're going to tell me, Star Wars Battlefront 2, did we need the campaign? So the show... The floor is all yours, Jeremy. We're going to segue into what we've been playing. You've been playing sure. the story. You've put out a video today on mm -hmm. uh, YouTube. You tweeted it out. So tell us, do we need a, a campaign in a game like Star Wars Battlefront 2? Sure. So um, whether or not you need a specific campaign, I will say you did not need a campaign in Battlefront 2. Well, I didn't need one in Battlefront 2. Uh, however, I think they tied in some stuff. The speculation is now that there's actually a pretty big reveal at the very end about um, uh, some some unknown content in the last Star Wars movie that may or may not be revealed in this next one. So uh, I guess on Disney's mind, they wanted it for that. But I would also say that the people who, when the last Star Wars game came out and did not have single player content, that was one of people's biggest complaints. So maybe they really did because that's what people were telling them that they wanted. And the EA listens, right? That's what we're being mm -hmm. told is they hear us and all that. So, um, I, I do think it was kind of shoehorned in, or if nothing else, it was it was there, one, to give the people what they wanted, and also, like I said, kind of give a tie-in for the movie. Um, but really, what I did with that video today, and, and uh, obviously we've talked about to death about all the negativity this game has got, I wanted to be able to, to for anyone who wanted to see that campaign, without all the... the uh, someone else or me playing poorly or whatever to be able to have that. So I recorded everything. I compiled everything. I took out all the parts of, of me just playing and dying over and over and over and over. So if you just want like an hour and 45 minutes or something like that, almost like a mini movie of star Wars, then you can go out and watch that. Um, and you don't have to worry about loot boxes or being preyed upon or anything like that. You can just go in and enjoy that little well, uh, well, well. single. <laughs> well, we, do have, we, we do have it behind the uh, bad fodder figures, Patreon paywall. So, there is going to be a right. little bit of uh, right. charge there. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, we kid, um, we kid, yeah. clearly. <laughs> Jokes. <laughs> yeah, well, and, and, you know, kind of talking about what we've been playing, you know, well, I mean, I, I guess, let me, does, does that, is that answer your question, or did you want to talk about that more? Well, or? I want to hear, well, I guess I want to hear your enjoyment of it. Did you feel, uh, was it uh, enjoyable as you play, or was it just like, I want to get this hour and 45 minute thing out so people can see it? But boy, this is, I am really uh, hitting my head against the wall. This is not enjoyable. I'd rather yeah. you know, put my balls in a door and have them slammed over and over again than play this. <laughs> so wow. somewhere in the middle, right? So um, just the, tip, the part, yeah, just the tip. The part that I mentioned about the, <laughs> the spoilers are leading into the movie, I actually did not even get the first time I played through. Uh, I kind of looked up some stuff online because the entire last chapter is very. Um, it's puzzling while it's there. And then the characters are, are saying lines and stuff that you don't really think much about. And then you go read some stuff and you're like, Oh, okay. That, that actually is kind of important or could be kind of important. So, um, I think anyone who's a star Wars fan who may have been scared off by this will definitely want to watch this or watch through it before the new movie comes out in case that, that does have that, that, you know, important meaning in there or whatever. Um, as far as overall, 
there were some really enjoyable times and there were some super frustrating times, even just, you know, I put it on very easy and there were still some times where it was not like, it would be a time where they wanted you to do a stealth type approach and they wouldn't tell you. So you just kind of keep banging your head against the wall and you keep having, you know, guys come out and spawn on you and you keep killing them. They keep coming. Uh, so there are definitely a couple parts where I got hung up and things that I think could have been done a little differently. Uh, surprisingly, I think the most enjoyable mission, there's one where you play as Lando and you have a, a sidekick there that I believe is a newer character. Uh, I think his name is Shriv. Uh, the dialogue between those two was just hilarious. Like it was great writing. They kind of you know took jabs at each other the entire time. It was a it was a lot of good uh, comedy, which is not something you you go into a Star Wars game for. But uh, overall, I think it, it's definitely worth a watch if you have any type of interest in Star Wars. Definitely a watch before the movie comes out in case that that content ends up being what what it really is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Excellent. And what would you say the uh, average length is? Uh, I think the total time with <laughs> with uh, with me dying a whole bunch. I think I I had probably around seven or eight hours of gameplay. Um, I Above the, the final the, yeah the the yeah. final <laughs> final video ended up being like ten two hours and ten or fifteen minutes. But the, I also put in the credits. Um, and I think Fred mentioned, you know, the cost of making games and everything. Those credits are like 20 minutes long, and they go at a really, you know, pretty decent pace. So. Uh, you know, I put it in there just because I know a lot of people aren't going to sit through. And uh, honestly, by the I was like, are these like just starting over at, like, 10 minutes later? I'm like, Looping. why are these still going? But yeah, no, they, it was just one time through. There's just a, a shit ton of people who worked on this game. So, um, yeah. you know, that's in there. You can skip it, whatever. The actual story parts are a little over an hour and a half, I'd say hour and 45 minutes. Um, but it, it was I'm glad I did it. You know, um, I, I, yeah. Cool. Awesome. Is, is it is it is it me, Jeremy, or did you have problem with the uh, the space combat part of it? Um, the only I, not as much. The problems I had with that is like you would go to to turn around, and because a lot of these It'd be battles, you jump in the area. Yep, and you just instantly die. I'm like, son of a yeah. bitch! Like, there's no way you could have known it <laughs> yeah. was there because exactly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, those I didn't have as much problem as I did a couple of the missions, like I said, where they wanted you to sneak or you basically had to sneak, but they didn't really give you any um, any indication. And there's a couple of times where they'll put the little way, the, the waypoint of where you're supposed to go, where you're supposed to do, but it would take a good five or ten seconds before it would pop up. And right. some of the things you would have no idea that that's what you were supposed to do or where you were supposed to go, but it, minor things, really. Okay. Hmm. Cool. What else have you been playing, Jeremy? Well, because of, of that, and uh, that was also kind of a test to, to some video skills, uh, video editing skills on my part to see what I could do and uh, exactly how long that would take for me to do that and everything. I'm going to go back and uh, do kind of the same thing with some other games that I've had, uh, games that I think have good stories that would also be easier for me to kind of edit out just the, the playing part. Um, I know, like, uh, Matt and Mike, I know you guys don't like fighting games, and I've told you, like, the, the Injustice story or even the, the Mortal Kombat stories are actually really good, but, of course, you guys don't like fighting games, so you'll never really get to see those. Um, so I think I'm going to go back and do some of those older games. Um, something like The Witcher would be really hard to do as far as just cutting out the the non-essential stuff plus that's like you know 50 100 hour games whereas the those fighting games are only three or four hours long so that'd be easier to do so i think i'm going to go back and do uh, a couple of those oh. throw them up on the on the youtube there uh, so I'll, I'll play the part of matt uh, i don't i don't have youtube slash devious mr matt because you know i don't have enough subscribers or anything <laughs> uh but if you look for hoodie ninja h-o-o-d-y NYNJA, where I, actually I'll probably uh, link them up on our, our Bad Fodder Figures page too as well. Oh, nice. um, so in the next few weeks, if you want to to take the take a look at the story of some older games, uh, like I said, I'm going to do both the Mortal Kombat's that the last two that came out, probably both the Injustices, and I think there's a couple other games I could get through and um, just throw that up there and let people like you guys who might have interests see it for free. Mm. Now, what program are you using to do all this editing? Uh, it's called, uh, I've got it right here. Power director. I think Power director. it was, uh, yeah, it was something I actually got for very cheap with a humble bundle a few months back. They did a, a video editing, uh, bundle or oh, nice. and I think I had images and stuff like, so I, I didn't pay a whole lot for it, but it's, it's really nice, pretty easy to use. And, uh, uh obviously if I'm using it, then it, it can't be that bad. Right. Nice. 
<laughs> Matt, is that what your secretary calls you? The power director? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She just calls you PD yeah. for short? PD, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or no, ED, calls erectile them, dysfunction. She, she, she calls them, no, she calls them hun, humble bundle. Put them bump. All right, Eric, for that, there was nothing else, Jeremy, right? That was it? Oh, that's it. That's our guy. Awesome. All right, since you're the funny man tonight, Eric, um, <laughs> tell us before you get into um, what you've been playing or watching or whatever. Um, how has the uh, development? I've seen some pictures. Now, this, this is a serious question. I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to make fun of anything here. I'm a very serious individual. Right. You posted some photos today okay. of the um, the Mario room, okay. right? Uh, now, is this Mario in blackface, or is this a black Mario, or just Mario not been colored in yet? Mario hasn't been colored in yet. Right. <laughs> the wall. Oh, man. Oh. I was thinking for Black Mario. Like Black I can't wait to Black tell Jesus. Uh, that it looks like oh Black Mario. It looks like Mario you in Black are hilarious. No. Oh. Black Mario. Yeah, this is Black Mario. Please do Black Mario now. Please do. <laughs> no, I got to s- on him. Oh, I got to I got to be hey. I got to be February honest there, right? Black History Month. I got to be honest. There was a pause there of like two to three seconds, and I was like, fuck, I crossed the line. I finally fucking did it. <laughs> ah, that's the funniest Black shit Bowser I've ever, ever heard. <laughs> yeah, oh, my God. It's, it's close to, well, what it is, it's close to February, Black History Month, so I just thought we right. <laughs> No, man. It's, it, he just has to be colored. <laughs> black Mario. That's hilarious. Um... Man, y'all some funny dudes. <laughs> no, he just hasn't been colored. That's all, man. We're 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 working on that right now, actually. Oh my He's god. He's not colored. <laughs> so how's it going? Beyond that, how's it going? Oh. oh no, what I was doing, man, I was uh I was streaming uh you doing your extra life and I've been in here working, man. I put up games on the wall. I don't know. You seen the, the picture of the old games I got, all the old yes, systems see. I put up. Yeah, and uh, that's all I've been doing. I got the doors up, the, well, the mirrors. I got the mirrors up. That's a lot of work, bro. Let me tell you something. It's a lot of work. Now, at any, point dur- at any point as you're doing this, is, does your wife look over and go, you, shit, there's no turning back now. We're committed. <laughs> I was she- committed when I cut the hole in the wall. <laughs> there's no turning back. I got to do something. So, yeah, man, we're... We're we're good, man. Once she once she paints black Mario, we'd be probably good to go after that. <laughs> and and uh, I think because uh, I got to work Monday too, them off Wednesday. Wednesday I'm gonna uh, I got like I told you I got that LG. I'm gonna mount that up in here too beside this other nice. TV. So so I'm That's serious funny. about this. This isn't again. I'm a very serious person, but <laughs> I'm saying yeah. when th- when this is done, and I said this on the stream, I believe. Uh, mm-hmm. When this is done, we're going to have a, um, a a BFF meetup, a meeting of the minds, the four of us, in the uh-huh. uh, D.C. Virginia area, and we're going to go to some sort okay. of restaurant and have you know drinks and everything, and we'll put Jeremy right up on our phone on Skype because we know <laughs> yeah. we, we know he doesn't leave the house, so right. <laughs> the three of us will be there at the table. We'll get some sort of monitor, put Jeremy on it, you know, just his headshot there, and no, you, yeah. I want like a car. Say that again. Let me get a TV on a card or something oh, like TV, that. TV on a card. <laughs> yeah. Just wheel you around. Yeah. Because <laughs> we, we, like we know he won't put, leave put it, the uh, Columbus area. That's cool. That's cool. <laughs> but other than that, man, I've been, I was playing uh, Battlefront and just working on this stuff. That's that's all I've been doing, man. All awesome. weekend. All right, Matt, it's your turn. You've had your Christmas party. Yes, sir. Black Mario. <laughs> <laughs> Here's your show title. Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you, I have, I've had a few here that, I, that I'm, I got a couple ideas that I'm psyched out of my mind about right now. You know? um, <laughs> and I got a, no longer at the kids' table, the devil's armpit, and now we got Black Mario. Jeez. Some weeks we got nothing, and other weeks we're just, you know, just riches. Yeah. 
<laughs> well, uh, Mike, if I if I may, uh, yes. forego my what I've played and tell you guys about this dream I had Friday night. Oh uh, yes, yes, <laughs> shit, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I had a dream and shit. You guys, not you guys are all in it. No, no. Okay? It's like the mm. Wizard of Oz. <laughs> the four of us, okay, went to New York City, Times Square, for a John Madden midnight release <laughs> celebration. <laughs> we know Jeremy the would be there. Us, the four of us went, all right? And specific. we're all in this stairwell getting ready to go into, like, this big, like, room or whatever, okay? And there were, like, four or five people in front of us, okay? And then your pants fell off, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, how'd this happen? <laughs> <laughs> it gets better. <laughs> and then all of a sudden I hear pow, pow, pow. I'm like, man, that sounds like gunshots. And Eric says, no, bro, I'm a professional. Those weren't gunshots. <laughs> what? <laughs> so, Jeremy, stream ever you, heard. Were in, you were in shorts, okay, in a right. t-shirt, but uh-huh. you had like this vest on, okay? Right. Like, like a hunting vest type of thing. Suave. <laughs> <laughs> and you pull out this pistol with a silencer on it. And you say, oh, and you, you, you say, from all these people, and you crack, crack open the door, and you say, yep, those were gunshots. They're shooting in there. And you shut the door, and you say, don't tell anybody. Let's go. <laughs> so Mike, he's like, well, I don't want to go. I want my game. <laughs> <laughs> like, Priorities. You gotta, you gotta go. You gotta go. <laughs> Priorities. And, you gotta go. And Jeremy was actually taking lead, saying, "No, guys, we gotta go. We gotta get out of here. We can't live through this." So we like split, run down these stairs, and we spent like the rest of the evening trying to find each other in New York. And that's when I like woke up. We, we mm-hmm. was trying to find each other. Shit. Oh, it was crazy. We was going up and down the alleys and stuff. And we would, like, see someone go by on a bus, and then that was it. And we're like, oh, there goes Mike. And then, okay, well, let's keep looking. And, uh, and then I, like, woke up. And Jeremy Jeremy was walking around with the heat, with the silence on it, right? Yeah. <laughs> even, though, even though we had the professional with us, I was the one in yeah, my look, shorts and vest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no matter Jeremy you- was. At least, on, at least on my end, you cut out a little bit, Matt, when you were talking about that. What, what did you say to Jeremy after the, the gun? He pulled out a gun? Yeah, he pulled out a uh, What did I say to Jeremy? Yeah, there was something. You, I, we got right up to the point where you said he was wearing the vest. He pulled out some sort of gun or he something. He pulled out a gun with a silencer on it. Yes, that's when you cut out. Oh, yeah. He pulled out a gun with a silencer on it. And then he went up to the door and opened the door. He's like, yeah, they're shooting inside there. We got to go. Okay. And then he put, it was like he shut the door, and like the people that were in line in front of us, he said, "Don't tell anybody." <laughs> <laughs> and Jeremy's like, "Okay, we gotta get out of here." And yeah, you refused to go, and yeah, <laughs> Eric, it's a very no expensive bro- vest. Don't tell anybody yeah. about it. He yeah. had to get his pre-order bonuses. That's why Mike didn't want to yeah. leave. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Physical. Yeah, it, was, it was one of the very realistic the dreams too. It was pretty wild. Wow. I don't, you know, we walk out. And I walk out. I was like, "Holy fuck." Now, what did, now, what did you have before you had the stream? Did you have bourbon, whiskey. This was fr- this was this had this was Friday night. Um, what did I? I had a a, a couple beers. Um, that was about it, really. Did you smoke any cigars? Mm-hmm. No, I didn't smoke any cigars. No, I'm about, I didn't. I'm about to ask you, were they real cigars or was? <laughs> the with- did you smoke anything else? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. Was I uh, uh, post sex dream. No, I wish. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, no, it was just one of them things. It was like, wow. And then I had a dream also that night that I would, uh, I was one of those guys that climbed uh, like radio towers. I had to climb this tower <laughs> to uh, change the light bulb at the top. Oh, the light bulb. Yeah, I had to change the light bulb at the top of the tower. So I'm climbing and climbing and climbing and. I don't know. There were like loose parts and shit on a thing. I was trying to work All my way up so, there. There's a light bulb. For what reason? <laughs> the don't, planes don't hit it. For the I birds mean, or whatever? For the planes don't hit it. <laughs> planes. For planes. planes. Uh, <laughs> the plane. The plane. Yeah. So, mm. Two uh, crazy, crazy dreams. Mm. Excellent. Anything yeah. else, Matthew? Uh, that, no, no, I, I don't think I should say anything more. I think that toe infection spreading to your brain. <laughs> did, you have, did you have any NyQuil? 
I'll tell you what, man. NyQuil is one good drink. <laughs> Get some good so, shit. That... So, so now it's a toe infection, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> infection. <laughs> so wait a minute. This, I, I shouldn't put this toe jam on my bread? No. Oh, hmm. no. Oh. You know, Matt revealed to me earlier today, he said, you know, sometimes I say to myself later, why did I tell people that on the podcast? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, um, oh man! <laughs> so th- I told you about the extra life, and I think I played sixteen hours of Fortnite. I think I'm going to skip Fortnite for f- at least a few days. I'm right, a bit, you should. Jesus I'm a bit, <laughs> a bit Fortnite it out. Um, I got to say, I'm disappointed, may- and this could just be my fault, but I was under the assumption that the Call of Duty campaign could be played in co-op. Yes. And so during the stream today, we did some uh, multiplayer in Call of Duty. Of course, we've done some Fortnite. But then at the end of the stream, I'm like, Matt, let's try to do, and we had like two hours left. I was like, let's try to do uh, the campaign. And we figured that there was going to be like some tutorial, you know, um, you know, setting of the scene. You know, you're going to storm the beach at Normandy by yourself, and then you're going to meet up with your squad and then go on and play the game. Maybe that still happens. I don't know. But we got through, what would you say, 45 minutes, maybe, of mm-hmm. us playing? And there was mm-hmm. still no um, opportunity to squad up. Now, either, you know, it's typical, you know, Call of Duty type stuff. I didn't feel it was groundbreaking one way or the other. I will say uh, storming the beach at Normandy was a little frustrating. Yes, it was. I think the both of us died three or four times. Maybe I died yeah. five to seven times. Oh, um, my God. But yeah, once I have, once I got to the storm wall, I was okay. But I got to tell you, I was screaming at my TV on the on the stream. You'll see it. This guy kept telling me, I don't know, if, Peterson, get to the storm wall, get to the storm wall. I'm like, if this motherfucker tells me to get to the storm wall one more time, this guy with like a heavy machine gun, you know, breathing down my neck, get to the storm wall. Uh, but yeah, it was alright. It was you know typical Call of Duty stuff. I thought, and then we were going to end the stream the last 15 minutes of playing the knack 2 demo again supposed to be co-op we fired up and it's only local co-op yeah. sons mm. of bitches mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. so we did some zombies in uh call of duty which was okay i could I mean it was a lot more intuitive than whatever we the hell we try to play in uh black ops 3 right it seemed a little bit mm-hmm. more uh easy to mm-hmm. do Mm-hmm. So that's pretty much what I've been playing. You know, otherwise, uh, Super Mario Odyssey, still playing that. Uh, Wolfenstein 2. But now that Extra Life is over, I hope to get back into some other stuff. Um, that's it. So let's get into the uh, the news segment here, shall we? we got some uh, news topics to go over, and then uh, we'll be done. So let's talk about the news. Really? Okay, do you hear what he just said? Do you hear what he... He just said, why don't you, for once in your life, just do the fucking news. All right. No, no, no. No. I'm going to do... No, I'm going to do the fucking news. No. Here is the fucking news. Yes, as he said, here is the news. Uh, some notable releases this week. Dead Rising 4, Frank's Big Package. And I was surprised to learn this is exclusive to the PS4. Uh, Dead Rising 4 is already out on Xbox One, but this update... Um, that they're putting together, which I think includes the original Dead Rising. Uh, like I said, it's exclusive to the PS4. Uh, a game that it's I'm not, hearing a lot of people... It's not new content, right? It's just all bundled together? I think it's all bundled together. I think there is some new content in there because you can play as certain people from like other video games that you've experienced, other Capcom characters, mm. right? So like Street Fighter characters and stuff like that. And... Um, mm-hmm. Is Metroid, Metroid Man, is that Capcom? I'm not 100% sure, but um, you can play as him and things like that. What was that? Breaker, breaker one. Uh, uh, no, I didn't say anything. Oh. Um, there's also a, um, a game coming out called A Hat in Time. As I like to say, I think this is going to be the flavor of the week. I think people are going to be uh, playing this. I guess it's a uh, platformer. Hearing a lot of people saying it's really good. And then uh, Hello Neighbor, 
This is a game that's out on uh, PC already. It's going to be a console exclusive to Xbox. I guess it's a, a tactical game where you have to get into your neighbor's home to see what he's doing in his basement. That's what Jeremy tries to do all the time. Mm-hmm. 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 All right. Uh, some other news items here. Destiny 2. There's some, an update on the XP mechanics. They put out a rather lengthy um, show, uh, let's say, update notes, right? And I don't like to get into the specifics of all that, but what they did say is uh, last weekend we disabled a scaling mechanism that adjusted XP gains up and down without reflecting those adjustments in the UI. Our intention was to keep slower-paced activities as rewarding as high-intensity grinding without confusing variations in displayed XP values. But the silent nature of the mechanic betrayed the expectation of transparency that you have for Destiny 2. So they sort of did a, a mea culpa and that they are uh, rolling something out that's going to be transparent. You're going to earn the XP that you deserve. Uh, there's going to be some tweaking here or there, but pretty much they, um, you know, owned up to their mistake, and we'll see where it goes from there. But they were doing some shenanigans behind the scenes. Mm. But I will say a lot of people that I know were Destiny heads and picked up Destiny 2, they seem to be disappointed. Uh, case in point, we played a lot of Fortnite with Captain Junkie over the weekend. You might know him from Twitter. He was huge into Destiny, and um, you know, he's just not into Destiny 2 as much as he was the first one. Uh, moving on, the Division Update 1.0 is out this week. It's going to be out on the 4th, and uh, there's a new PvE horde mode called Resistance. Uh, Players build fortifications against allied factions using SHD tech. So, Matt, you can put your civil engineering uh, skills to use once again in video games, build. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. There's also a new uh, 4v4 PvP mode called Skirmish. And lastly, the underground will be revamped with new directives, checkpoints, gear optimization, so on and so forth. So, again... A free update for the division. They keep on adding content to that. We'll have to jump, jump in. Mm-hmm. Uh, some Fortnite news here. They just put out a state of development version three. Again, uh, lots of notes here that I don't want to go over. But what I do want to say is that they're adding new, unique POIs. Does anybody know what POIs are? Points of interest. Thank you, sir. So new uh, points of interest to the map to better fill in some of the empty spaces and introduce more gameplay variety. So um, they're going to be updating uh, mountains and swamp regions with unique art for for flora and landscape. You can quickly recognize different regions from up above on the ground, providing an improved sense of location and space. So they put a screenshot in here, and that looks like a completely brand new city. So that's cool. Mm. I really think they're trying to improve the game so much that they beat Fortnite, uh, PUBG to the punch, constantly iterating on things. Well, is this map updates for the Battle Royale part yes. or for the PVE? Battle Royale. Okay. So they're going to add um, you know, whole new, uh, new cities and things like that. I think someone said they're going to add um, two kilometers more to the game. Holy shit. Yeah. Uh, we already oh. talked about uh, PUBG de- debuting at the Game Awards, so we don't need to uh, discuss that. Again, they're <coughs> going to be showing off the um, new desert map, which supposedly is going to launch with the uh, Xbox version. We'll see if that happens, because, you know, uh, people lie about things, and then they have to take it back. Just like this week, we saw someone say the PUBG was going to run at 60 frames per second oh, on the Xbox One X. And then the next day, uh, player unknown himself had to walk that back and say, "No, it's going to be at 30 frames per second." Mm. So that's shitty. Why is that? Because if you paid for an Xbox One X, you should be able to play that in 60, that and anything else in 60 frames per second. Mm. Yeah, the world's most powerful console should be able to right. do it. Uh, exactly. Right. Exactly. Yep. But that game is run so unoptimized on PC. You think they're holding it back? Or do you just think it can't run 
at 60 frames per second because if they try to make it run at 60, other things break. Uh, you know, I, I talked about this a little bit on Twitter with Indio, and he brought up a good point that maybe um, it would be considered a a playing an, an advantage. So, like, if you're seeing things at 60 frames per second and I'm seeing at 30 on my day one Xbox and you're on your right. Xbox One X, you know, do do your double frames help you, uh, you know, over me? I don't I don't know. Um but That's yeah, I mean, the, I, I, I'm sure their excuse is going to be keeping it all in the family and everything. But, you know, we've we've talked about how they're they don't have a lot of exclusives. This was a big one they were hanging their hat on. And then, you know, to to for all those people who just went out and bought five hundred dollar systems from them saying how powerful it is and then not actually letting people see that. That's shitty. Right. I mean, I guess they got to level the playing field. But do you think they're going to have I mean, is it possible to have um, Xbox One X? PUBG exclusive rooms just for people with Xbox One X's? There, I mean, is it possible? Sure, I'm sure it is, but they're, again, it's going back to they don't want to segregate people, which yeah, I, I right. see both sides of that. Um, but also, I mean, I think I think it would be hard to 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 for a game that's multiplayer based on having up to 100 or, you know, you want at least 90 people in something like that. Uh, are you really going to be able to populate that many games on a on a early access game that's brand new? And uh, if you yeah. segregated them that way too, mm. I don't know. I I just I I just think it's shitty. Yeah, this is you know the the corner that they've all you know sort of painted themselves in. PlayStation, same mm-hmm. thing with the Pro. Um, you know, the, you're exactly right. They got to have a level playing field. And they just can't say go out and say, well, you know what? You want to get PUBG? It's going to be an Xbox One X exclusive. You know, imagine the shitstorm that that would that would cause. Right. But that's that's ultimately what the machine it belongs on. It doesn't belong on the OG Xbox. It doesn't belong on you know the OG Xbox One. It doesn't belong on the Xbox S. It belongs on the X. You know, you, we've played enough of it on PC to know mm-hmm. that that game is not optimized in some right. spots. But they still yeah. kind of like. Uh, kind of do that in a way because if you look at the uh like the newer game boxes it says uh enhanced for xbox one x or optimized for xbox right. one x so it's kind of like they're doing it anyway yeah well, and, I, and i've been saying go ahead. good well i was gonna say i haven't seen it yet for a multiplayer so i you know i have wolfenstein 2 right yeah, in front of me um right, right. fortnite right. is an interesting case because fortnite just got the xbox one x enhanced update so I am curious to see how that plays out with against um, people on the regular Xbox Ones versus the uh, enhanced version. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I wonder, like, for Gears or Halo that also have those, like, are are those running at sixty, but then everyone else is running it? You know, I don't, I don't know. I'm asking. Yeah, um, I mean, but I mean, and and you mentioned as far as you know, it's it's not real stable on PC. I, I guess. I've been saying that for you know since they announced it, how I didn't think it was going to do well because of that, and that is the one benefit they have when you're optimizing for PC. You have almost limitless uh, types of configurations you have to shoot for, but if you're putting on a console, you have what three that you got to work on. So you'd think that'd be easier for them to do, but I I don't know. Yeah, I wonder if it's one of those things that will come down like a couple months later once more Xbox One Xs are out there. I don't know. But you're right, it is shitty. People want to take advantage of what they just put their hard-earned money down on, and they can't have it. Now, again, if it's just because it doesn't run correctly, then I guess that's a different story. Um, right. but go ahead. Michael, in, in the stream, you were talking to one of the players, and they said that um, you can play on Fortnite PS4 and computer. I didn't. Right? I was not aware of that, that you can play... Crossplay with PC to P and PS4. You probably, I mean, you can with Paragon. Uh, granted, they're different. You know, one's a co-op game. Well, I guess that's technically competitive too. So yeah, but you can't do it with Xbox and. Uh, oh PC? no, you you wouldn't want to. No. No, you do not. No, I mean, if you see some of these these like you know, you watch some Doctor Disrespect, you mm-hmm. know, you see how he takes people out just. You know his three. What is it, Mike? His three three sixty no scopes and all that. Right, you, yeah. Stuff that you could not do on a controller. At least mm. not most but, people couldn't anyway. But what about the? Yeah, but what's the difference with, between the PS4 though? It's still a console. I'm wondering if that's the reason I'm getting you know owned a lot. I, some of these people pairing up with their PC friends. 
You know, yeah, because I mean? that was a rele- that was a revelation to me too. When yeah, when I'm gonna have to read up more of that. I don't know if that's like what. I don't want to make the person you know. I'm not okay, accusing that right. person of lying. I just need to dig into that more if that's the case. <laughs> if I can play with my PC friends on the PS4, I just need to I need to check that out. But yeah, you're right. Like. Why would I want to do that? <laughs> right. Well, I, I mean, you can on Paragon, and that does have a competitive mode. I mean, you're, you had, yeah. granted, it's only five against five, but you still technically can play in that way, and it is sort of a shooter, so mm. it wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. We'll get back to people right. on that. Uh, moving on to Call of Duty, there was a leak this week um, about some new stuff coming to the game. There's new modes called demo. Well, these are modes that have been in games before: demolition, uh, control, and infected, as well as the uh, popular gun game. And they're going to have some uh, new weapons, including the Sten and a couple German things that I'm not going to try to pronounce. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to try? Yeah, go ahead. You're a Helmer. Go ahead. <laughs> nah, you get, nah, you get the I article up. <laughs> <laughs> right. um, they didn't teach you German, Matt. Uh, nah. Yet, yet. <laughs> no, that's Russian, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> nine. Right. Yeah, at nine. Was ist los? <laughs> um. Let's see here. Free games for PlayStation Plus for December. It's already December 3rd, so you should be able to download these uh, this week, I think, if they're not already out. For the PS3, Siberia Collection, as well as X-Blaze Lost Memories. For the uh, PS Vita, Former 8. Uh, that's also got crossed by with the PS4. And also uh, we have... Darksiders 2, the Death it Definitive Edition, and Kung Fu Panda Showdown of Legendary Legends. I think Jeremy's already got that one. And <laughs> for the VR, Rush, uh, this is the Until Dawn Rush of Blood. Fantastic. You, did, nice. I, want, that, I, I bet that in VR would be insane. It's insane. I bet that'd be scary as shit. No, it's an on rail <laughs> shooter, though. It's not like the real Until Dawn. No, it's, a, yeah. not, it's, not, it's just a shooter. Yeah. yeah, but still, I bet it's, it's pretty good. It's, yeah, it's pretty awesome. Mm. Anybody going to be downloading anything here? Kung Fu Panda for the kids? Jeremy? Uh, possibly. I, got, I have to check it out first and see mm-hmm. what it's all about. They might not like it. Too, too kitty. Uh, moving on. You know, this is going to be an important <laughs> item in the basement for Eric. <laughs> Super Mario Odyssey cereal. Uh-oh. Have you heard about this? No. Yeah, I have. I'm not, I'm not eating that. Well, you're not going to eat it. You're going <laughs> to do stuff with it. Um, you're going to be able to use it as, I guess, an amiibo. So uh, we are thrilled to pack so much fun into the box of cereal. The package adds value and excitement for fans with marshmallow shapes in the cereal uh, shape inspired by Super Mario power-ups to tie the theme together. Um, they'll be hitting the store shelves in early December, as early as December 11th. And I guess you can tap the cereal box on the Nintendo Switch system like you would an Amiibo to receive gold coins or a heart in the game. Even the cereal itself has a Super Mario twist with colorful power-up marshmallows. So now cereal is a loot box. Damn. Yeah. How, much, <laughs> yeah. how, how much is this cereal going to cost? 19 bucks? <laughs> You're hard to find, too, right? It's $20, $20, but the Mario's are chocolate. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, damn. Oh, shit. Each Super Mario it's... cereal box functions as an amiibo accessory. And um, last bit of news here, circle backs with the uh, Xbox One X, Fallout 4, and Skyrim have now received their Xbox One X enhancements. And they put in some some pretty pictures to look at it. But I say to myself, why do I need to buy these? I already own Fallout 4 and Skyrim on the PC. Those should look better than the Xbox One X, right, Jeremy? Yeah, yeah, they put out those high-res texture packs years ago, I think. Mm-hmm. Mm. Well, that's all the news mm-hmm. I have, gentlemen. It's the month of December. Santa will be visiting us in 20, Yay, 21 Santa. days. At, 
Anybody have anything exciting on their uh, Christmas list that you maybe want to shout out to Santa and see if he'll pick it up for you? Mm. Cigars, Ooh, switches. Yeah. yeah, I'd love a cigar. I'd love a switch. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Eric already said last week that he already buys everything he wants, so nothing is on. Mm-hmm. He's got nothing on <laughs> Christmas. You weren't on, Jeremy, last week. Anything right. on your uh, Christmas list? Uh, no, but man, I want to I want to talk real briefly because I, I know Eric saw it. There. Well, actually, you saw it too, Mike. The, they sent out those emails letting people try out the PSVR yes, for free for two that. weeks. Jesus, man, I was, trying, man. I was trying to get that for you, Jeremy. I was oh my to God! Get to you if I would have got it. <laughs> <laughs> Cause, yeah, because so for those who don't know, they sent out an email to, to uh, apparently PS Plus members with a unique code. It says, click this link if you want to try PSVR, the Skyrim edition, blah, 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 for two weeks. So I'm assuming you give them your credit card, and if you don't send it back in two weeks, they charge you. But that was, like, the perfect thing. So I'm like, holy shit. And I, it was like the email was only, like, an hour old. So I hit the link. We're sorry. We've exceeded the number of blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh. you got to be kidding me because that would have just been perfect to try it. Now, who ever heard of that? So they're going to s- – what was they were going to send you one to try out for, for two weeks? It's like encyclopedias back in the day. <laughs> yeah. Try them out, you know? <laughs> See if you like them. If you don't like them, send them back. Yeah. Who yeah. the fuck's yeah. putting, like oh, – who's the hell's, you know, putting, you know, back in the day, putting the encyclopedias back in the box and bringing them to the place? Exactly. And that's well, what but, they're thinking is probably yeah. – well, that's what they've been saying all along. The hardest thing is going to be get you know is going to be to get people to try it, right? And so you got it. You it's there. It's working. Do you really want to unhook it and box it all and send it all back if you actually enjoyed it, or are you just going to say, "Oh shit, charge my credit card. I'll keep this." No, you think you got a new one though? You're getting someone else's pink eye. Like, so they send it to Matt. Matt's like, "Ah, I'm not going to buy this. Fuck this. So I'll try it out and send it back." And you're getting like Matt's unit that he already. Got all like you know, yeah, put his toes on and everything. Yeah. If if they had been doing this for a long time, I'd say it's possible. But I, I would, I, I know they got a lot of them, so I'm sure this is this. These were probably new. At least this first batch. Who knows if they do it again in a month? Who knows what you'll get? But but I think that's a good a good marketing thing, I guess, because mm-hmm. I've noticed so many people who just they've heard of VR, they they think they know what it's about, but they've never tried it. Mm-hmm. And I I let my mother in law put it on today, and I mean, bro, I tell you what, she was blown away, mm. and she's asking me how much does all this cost because I want mm. this. I'm like, yeah, whatever. She's like sixty something mm. years old. She, you're not getting that. <laughs> now, what, what game did you let her play? I let her play. I did the kitchen demo. That freaked her out. Totally. <laughs> the Resident, the, the Resident <laughs> Evil. Resident Evil. And then Evil. I put her. I trying yeah, to kill the Resident her. Evil kitchen demo. <laughs> And then I oh, put her on I that. Um, you, Russia, I got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then I put her on that Russia Blood, the uh, Until Dawn Russia Blood, and she was freaked totally out. She said, "I've never seen anything like that before in my whole life." When you said yeah. kitchen, I was thinking, you know, a lot of these VR um, games, the demo they had, you could be in the kitchen and like make yeah. stuff and stuff. That's what I originally I thought you were talking about. So you didn't well, give her like well, any. You- you didn't like ease her in and give her something, you know, just normal. You put her right in. <laughs> okay, so Resident Evil I told her, Rush I, of Blood. I told her, I told her, I said, I'm gonna let you see this kitchen demo. And so and she was thinking like you was thinking, Oh, it's a kitchen. We can sit around, we can move stuff around. Yeah. Okay, check this out. And she was totally and what's and you know, it's funny because all you gotta do is close your eyes if you don't want to see something. People won't close their eyes. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's amazing. It's amazing. And she was totally freaked out, bro. It no, was, was she awesome. sitting down or standing up? No, she was sitting down. All right. picture, uh-huh. she freaks out, takes your whole TV down, <laughs> <laughs> running, running away from whatever's on the screen. The wall. <laughs> oh, man. Running into Black Mario, screaming at that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> running into Black Mario. And that, to me, yeah, I, like, I like seeing people's you know, reactions, how people react to it. I think it's great. Mm. <laughs> Excellent. All right, guys. Well, this is uh, episode six. Let's get into uh, some shout outs and plugs. Anything hey, wait, you got on these agenda, on Eric? Topics? Oh, you got a terrible huh? topic, Matt? Yeah, well, no, if you want to end the show, we can go ahead and end the show. It's a, no, we can see for next week or something. Let's No, let's hear from Matt. One second, please. <laughs> Might be women of the night walking around. Broadcasting out their anuses. Oh, I'm like 70s, Harry. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> oh, look at that. Burn it. <laughs> I'm right down with a fucking fan. Adult toys, sex crime, sexual assault, vaginas. Jesus fucking Christ. 
All right, who's got the GPS on the rub and tug? <laughs> gets me. Gets me every time. <laughs> my favorite part. My favorite part is when he goes, "Oh, look at that." <laughs> I'm I'm 70s Harry. <laughs> yeah, the crazy yeah. thing is, that was the whole conversation I had last night to the Christmas party. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, speaking of parties here, um, man had penis hacked off by a woman with pl- with pruning shears. Claims it was a sex game gone wrong. Good. Uh, yeah. Uh huh. This this girl is hot though. This is a blonde girl. Oh my god, she's hot. Click on that link there. <laughs> I play a game with her. Um, it says here the man who had his penis and testicles hacked off with pruning shears is claiming tonight that was a sex game gone wrong. It was previously reported that the 40-year-old rock musician, named only as Sergio F., was asleep when he allegedly <laughs> me- <laughs> when he was allegedly mutilated by stunning blonde architect Brenda Baratini. But his lawyer insisted today that he was both blindfolded and aroused when the attack took place. Baratini's lawyer claims the 26-year-old was defending herself from a sex assault after being fooled into letting Sergio into her apartment in Córdoba, Argentina. Uh, Carlos Naye said there is justification for what happened. The information I've received is that she was a victim of a sex attack. Uh, she let him into her apartment because he's someone who's in a rock band like Mike, is an acquaintance of her brother, but once inside, instead of removing a musical instrument as he was supposed to, he attacked her sexually, and he and she assumed a defensive attitude. Uh, says Howard claims were rubbished by Eduardo Perez, the lawyer acting for Sergio, whose reproductive organs are reported to have been rendered useless despite an emergency hospital op, which has put him out of danger. Uh, Mr. Perez said, I don't understand what has happened. This is something I've known for some time. This is someone I've known for some time. Uh, he said, this was a peaceful encounter. It doesn't seem very peaceful for me. Um, insisting the pair has been seeing each other for several months, he added, they were in the middle of things. He wasn't asleep. They began with a sexual game in which he was blindfolded. Uh, Argentinian papers have published pictures of the bloodied bed where Sergio alleges he was attacked, as well as the pruning shears on the floors. Um, offensive photos in one sens- sensationalist paper even show the man at the center of the confusing incident sat on the floor of her apartment with his hands covering his manhood and blood all over the lower part of his body. It's a hell of a thing to happen there. Pr- pruning shears aren't big. Like, they're not much bigger than just like a pair of scissors. I, I, she probably had to go, you know, a good couple of squeezes on that, right? Like, oh after God. the first one. Oh. Trying mm-hmm. to get away, aren't you? Or some, I don't know. That's... Yeah, I, yeah. Um, but I, I don't know. I, I think there's a, a he says she, uh, she said thing going she on here. She shells down by the seashore. <laughs> <laughs> <Something like that. laughs> yeah. But uh, they're still investigating the uh, incident here, and uh, Sergio is still in, in intensive care in the hospital. Well, Sergio, oh. get well, buddy. Yeah. yeah. God bless Ser- you, um, Sergio D. Yeah, Sergio D minus. Now. Someone was. Who were we talking to the other night? You were on that with Matt, right? When um, Bibbs and uh, Mark, and they were talking about people jumping off buildings and stuff like that, and opened up like a turkey on Thanksgiving. Oh right. yeah. Ugh. Someone was telling mm. us about a girl that was riding on the back of a motorcycle, right? Oh yeah, yeah, and um, did a wheelie or something like that. Right, mm. and her 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 buttocks and vagina got like burnt. Yeah, like rubbed off or something. <laughs> the first thing she asked the doctor, am I ever going to be able to have sex again? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's the least of your problems right now, sweetheart. Absolutely. Yeah. Think twice here before you do something. But Anything yeah, else you got to report, Matt? Uh, real quick, this is a short story, Mike. I know you're tired. You're wanting to go to bed here, so I'm going to drag this out as long as I can. Right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> a farmer fined for trying to pick up women in his tractor. Uh, Anthony Breslin told police that he was looking for women after they pu- pulled him over in Derry City Center. The 18-year-old from Gortoneska in Burnfoot County, Donego, admitted to having no uh, uh, license plates on the vehicle on August 16th. I bet you that's just District- Toledo. <laughs> hey. <laughs> District Judge Barney McElholm said, this is Don Juan. I was going to say Derry Juan, but that would not be correct. 
Uh, defense listener Seamus Quigley said, We all know tractors are all about pulling power, but this is taking to extremes. Mr. Quigley said Breslin had been sent by his father to look for some cattle, the Belfast Telegraph reported. Uh, but after that, he had taken the head staggers, a northern Irish expression meaning to be stupid, and that he had gone to Derry to look for women. He was fined 50 pounds. 50 pounds. He had taken the head staggers. Mm-hmm. I hate when the head staggers get me. Mm-hmm. Nice. Yeah. Well, thank you, Matt, for the uh, terrible topics this week. Absolutely. Um, since you are talking and your, your pipes are all uh, ready there to talk some more, um, name tag man, why don't you uh, give us some of your uh, shout outs or anything, yeah, well, anything uh, you want to close with, out, Matthew? Shout out you for doing your three days of gaming there. Um, quite the feat, along with Jeremy doing his 24 hours that he did. So. Thanks to both of you guys for raising money for the children mm. and the kids and stuff like that and doing shit. Jerry, so how much did awesome. you raise? Uh, I want to say it was in the neighborhood of three something. And your nice. company matches three or four. And your company matches that. No, the company of the people who donated. So, because I know so, several people are basically people I used to work with in my old job, and oh, I know I that you. that place will. So, so you might have made you might have cleared five hundred when once those yeah. Out. Yeah, yeah. All right. So between the three of us, uh, two of us, maybe around thirteen hundred dollars, something like that. Not yeah. bad. Not too yeah. shabby. Nice. Uh, check out uh, the old Future Monkeys. They got a new show that came out, and uh, some other independent podcasts out there. Games we don't play. He's got a new one out there on that too. So check all those guys out. And uh, of course, all you guys for being on the show. Jeremy was missed last week, so I'm glad he's back on this week. Mm-hmm. It's always great hearing that laugh of his. It's infectious. Mm-hmm. Mm. Let's hear it again, Jeremy. At least my laugh is the only thing that's infected on me, man. Oh. No. <laughs> uh, Jeremy, any shout outs, plugs, complaints, concerns? Uh, YouTube slash, uh, well, I guess it's not slash yet, but we uh, after that giveaway, we got really close to 100 uh, uh, subs on YouTube for the Bad Fodder Figure site. So, uh, you know, again, the reason why we want that is not because we get all kinds of money or anything like that, but we just wanted to be able to say YouTube slash Bad Fodder Figures instead of ZXQR97, <laughs> whatever it is. So uh, if you haven't yet, give yeah. us a subscribe on there. But, uh, yeah, it was a good show last week. I uh, enjoyed the conversation and the topics. And uh, thanks to everyone who's listening and continuing to call in and, and fuel our fires. Excellent. Eric? Yeah, man, I want to shout out Jeremy. Thanks for coming back on, man. Missed you last week. Always mm-hmm. great to have Jeremy and his insight. Uh, shout out to you, Mike, and you too, Jeremy, for doing an extra life, man. It's awesome. And I had it on listening to you, Mike, and I was working, and a lot of people stopped by. So shout out to everybody who stopped by. And uh, shout out Black Mario. <laughs> <laughs> he rules with an iron fist. <laughs> that's, that's all I- <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's all I got, bro. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, so, yeah, let's, let's circle back to Extra Life. <laughs> uh, other people that donated that I didn't mention, uh, Major Laugh. Um, some of these people you don't know, but Major Laugh, King Heel, uh, Maniac 17, Agent Orange, Meef J, uh, Devious Mr. Matt, not sure who that is, uh, AZ Rockslide, Glovebox, uh, Tom Hooster, I mentioned the Mafias, Beardy McWhiskey dropped 100 Bomb, um, Zion Tane, Juggler of Geese, Captain Junkie. So thanks to all those guys for donating. I appreciate it. Um, as Jeremy mentioned, the 100 um, subs on YouTube, I am now chasing 100 followers on uh, Twitch, on my own channel, twitch.tv, Captain Mike M. And I guess I, since I streamed the... Uh, 24 hours over the last three days twitch has made me some sort of affiliate and believe it or not soliciting that you pay me five dollars a month because i don't really have any uh, worthwhile content but if you have an amazon uh, prime you can subscribe for free and um part of being an affiliate is you get to use those silly emotes right mm. so we're trying to um come up with some silly ones we want some that say like well shit and uh maybe me and <laughs> me in a hefty bag um maybe come up with a moon smoothie so if there's mm-hmm. other um bad fodder figure isms 
that you hear us say, uh, let us know because I'm going to compile a list of things that we can get emotes for. I try to have fun with the Twitch channel. You guys come in and, and watch. You know, we'll have like some sort of our, our version of potatoing because we die a lot in games. So we're going to try to have fun with that. So if you're inclined, feel free to subscribe at twitch.tv uh, slash cap mic. Um, not subscribe. Uh, follow. You could subscribe as well with your Amazon Prime, like I said. Uh, other than that, we need to coordinate a Bad Fodder Figures stream night, so look for that at some point. We've been busy with other stuff, but mm-hmm. the uh, three or four of us need to get together and, and do some shenanigans soon. That's overdue. Yeah. And other than that, I think that's it, gentlemen. Um, people want to talk to us on Discord, tiny.cc forward slash BFFS. Matt, if they want to call in, what's the number again? It is 506, or I'm sorry, 508 659 BFFS. 508 659 BFFS. Exactly. So this has been episode six. If you like what you hear, leave a review somewhere where you hear, listen to us, and we'll try to do a better job next week with uh, episode seven. So uh, have a good week, and we'll talk to you next week. To me, Mario, motherfucker. <laughs> hey, that was Black Mario. <laughs> <laughs>